Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the deal. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Turn your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 6. We are going to take a look at some things. Specifically, well, we'll get there. So let's take a look. All right, Matthew chapter 6. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah. Now, these are words of Christ in red, Jesus speaking. He says, Take heed, pay attention, that ye do not your alms, or charity, before men. Take heed that ye do not, uh, that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father, your Father which is in heaven, as opposed to the other guy that's uh, not in heaven, right? Oh, yeah. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. Yeah, don't... Uh, don't be uh, blowing a trumpet so everybody's looking at you when you're giving some something to a, a poor person or a disabled person, right? Do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues. Ooh, that sounds very anti-Semitic if you ask me. I'm being sarcastic, by the way. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Listen to this carefully. Verse 6. Matthew 6, 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Now, I'm not saying that Catholics are heathens. Probably some of them are. Of course, there's a lot of heathens that fill the so-called Protestant churches in the United States and UK and the EU. But I've heard Catholic priests say, oh yeah, go to say 10 Hail Marys or, you know, say the rosary 10 times. Uh, well, why, why do you have to say it 10 times? God didn't hear it the first nine? Really? Hail Mary, full of grace, blah, 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 blah. You know, I, I don't know. That's just my little interjection there. Be not ye therefore like unto them, as your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Now, there's another version of this where uh, the disciples came and asked him, uh, Lord or Master, teach us to pray like John's disciples 
And evidently, John the Baptist taught his disciples how to pray. But if it's in the Bible, I don't know where it's at. So if somebody knows and can, you know, let me know in the comments, I'd be, I'd appreciate it. But I'm going to go with this. And as I understand it, there's two different versions of the Lord's Prayer. But I just happened to pick this one. Verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, uh, I guess we read the next two things. We're going to break this down. I mean, you know, they think, oh, this is just little prayer that you give to the kindergarten kids, you know, but there's some powerful packed stuff in here. So, in verse 14, Jesus said, For if you forgive men their trespasses, and what does it mean, trespassing? Well, it means you're in a place where you shouldn't be, you know. Uh, you know, you're on somebody else's property, or... You know, and you shouldn't be there. You know, you're trespassing. Basically, you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. All right, so let's go break this down. Our Father, which art in heaven. Okay. Well, that gives you, as opposed to uh, which God there is, the God of this world or the God in heaven. All right, why are we saying our Father which art in heaven? You know, there's a whole bunch of people that are uh, all hung up on the sacred name of God. And there's actually people that say, well, if you don't use God's actual name, he's not going to hear your prayers. Huh? Really? Well, we're going to look into that. And uh, let's go to the book of Judges, chapter 13. Manoah was visited by an angel. So let's read Judges 13 and verse 16. Judges 13, 16. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread, and if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord. All right, so Manoah's going to ask a question here. Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? What is thy name? That when thy sayings come to pass, that we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret hmm well why are you asking me my name it's secret huh okay so Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord and the angel did wondrously and Manoah and his wife looked on there you go secret uh, let's keep going here. 
All right. Um, some you should I should mention that. Um, well, we'll get back to it. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Paul. Verse one. Second Corinthians twelve one. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. So there's at least three different heavens. One of them's the sky. What is the second or the third? I'm not sure. The Bible doesn't, to my knowledge, the Bible doesn't go into detail enough. Verse 3. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise. Remember Christ being crucified and, and there was two thieves? And the one thief said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the Lord said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh, yeah. So verse 4, How that he, this man, was caught up into paradise and heard, he heard with his ears and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter in other words my guess would be in our sinful flesh there are words that we are not allowed to speak I don't know if God's holy name is one of them I don't know you know, maybe that's why the translators of the King James Bible didn't attempt to articulate God's name. I've heard people say Jehovah. I've heard people say Yahweh. I've heard Yahweh. I've heard Yahshua, Yahashua, Yeshua. I don't know. I don't know. So, maybe one day when we don't have sinful flesh, when we have new bodies that are not corrupted like they are now, perhaps one day we will be able to speak those words, I don't know. There is a you-know-who book of magic. Believe it or not, Abracadabra comes from this book. It is a book of magic and Satanism. Um, I don't even want to mention it because I might get a strike. If I get one more strike on this platform, I am uh, the, the channel's toast. So, uh, these fools think that if they know an angel's name, that they can control him. Well, my name's Bob. But just because you know my name doesn't mean you can, you know, hey, Bob, go rob a bank and give me the money. Uh, no. So, yeah. But seriously, there's people that believe that if you don't use God's name exactly, uh, he's not going to hear your prayers. Well, let me tell you something. When I was, when I first came to the Lord, I was using, I was praying to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, Israel. There, that leaves no doubt who I was directing my prayers to. Well, let's go to Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Story of Moses when, he's, uh, when he had fled Egypt and was keeping the flock of Jethro. Verse 1, Exodus 3, 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. 
And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord, there's that angel of the Lord again, appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Hmm. So, yeah, you're sitting there looking at a bush burning, but it's not burning up. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, Now, I did an entire Bible study on the angel of the Lord. Now, remember, in verse 2, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. But in verse 6, this angel, listen to what this angel says. Moreover, he said, I am, I am the God of thy father. This angel of the Lord is saying, I am the God of thy father. He's speaking in the first person as he is God. Now, I did an entire Bible study on this, the angel of the Lord. And I believe this is Jesus Christ before he was born in the flesh. But that's my opinion. He said, I am the God of thy father. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Hmm. Interesting, huh? All right, let's read verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he, God, and he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee, that thou mayest bring forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? Yeah, you know, hey, God, uh, you know, when I go to these people, when I go to Israel, they're going to ask me, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to tell them, hey, God sent me. And they're going to say, uh, well, what's his name? See, Egypt was full of gods. They had Hoth, Ra, um, Anubis. I'm just, you know, they had a lot of them. Uh, not as many as... Uh, India, but uh, they've, they've got a number of them. Ra was a sun god. And, uh, you know, so they're going to be like, oh, wait a minute, we all we know what Ra, and we know Anubis, and we know this one and that one and that one, but what god are you serving, Moses? What's his name? And Moses said 
unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto him, them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Hmm. He didn't say, oh, you got to use my sacred name, uh, Yahweh or Yehovah or Jehovah or Yahashua or whatever. No. Maybe it's, maybe it's not lawful for us to utter God's name in this sinful flesh. You know, maybe God doesn't want us to uh, take his name in vain. And if we don't know his name, it's going to be pretty difficult to use the name in vain, wouldn't you think? Uh, that's my guess. I don't know. I mean, I don't know everything. Maybe one day we will, but, you know, for right now, no. Let's go to Mark 14 and uh, verse 55. Uh, this is when they're getting ready to crucify Jesus. And the chief priests and all the councils sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bear false witnesses against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed, the Most High God? And Jesus said, I am. Woo! <laughs> And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Boy, they didn't like that. Then the high priest rent his clothes and saith, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. So, yeah. All right, let's go to John chapter 8. Uh, you guys and gals knew John chapter 8 was coming, huh? Yeah. Uh, John 8, 20, uh, chapter 8 and verse 28. Then said Jesus unto them, he's speaking to the you-know-whos, so. When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free of sin, right? They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. What? How can you be Abraham's seed, and you were never in bondage in Egypt? Uh, well, guess what? Esau, the Edomites, who were descended from the Hittite Canaanites, they were not conquered by, uh, they never went into Egypt. So, they were not in bondage to the Egyptians. Think about that. And I, from what I understand, the Babylonians and the Assyrians didn't take them either. From what I understand, um, Petra was their, one of their um, ancestral homelands. And it was in the, dwell, uh, it was carved out into the rocks 
very, very difficult to um, take over that area. That could be a whole subject in and of itself, but, you know. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed via Esau, who God hated, by the way, at least some of them, maybe not all of them. I mean, after all, Jacob and Esau were brothers. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. See, there's two different fathers here. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and come from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Listen to this, verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. And this is going to tie into the attributes of Satan. You got three choices that I can see here. Jesus is calling them names. You're of your father, the devil. Nah, 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 nah. Or he's using a figure of speech, spiritually. Well, you guys are evil, doing evil, so you're of your father, the devil. Or Jesus is telling the truth. They really are of the devil. Shades of Genesis chapter 6. Let's read verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Uh, who was the first recorded murderer in the Bible? Uh, let's see. Give me a C. Give me an A. Give me an I. Give me an N. What's that spell? Cain. Interesting, huh? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Wasn't the first recorded instance of Satan in the Bible? He lied. He told Eve, ye shall not surely die if you eat of this fruit. He was a liar. There is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, and because I tell you the truth, and because I tell you the truth, and I'm not using a figure of speech, and I'm not calling you names, ye are of your father the devil. Woo. Verse 45, And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. That's some powerful stuff there, people. You know? Wow. Let 
Let's see. Verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory, but, um, I'm sorry, I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Are we talking about, see, they're thinking physical death. Christ is probably referring to spiritual death. 53. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Remember, I am hath sent me. I am. Boy, and you think the Jews didn't understand what he's saying here? He's telling them that he's the... Uh, my opinion is he's telling them I'm the uh, the angel speaking in the first person for God at the burning bush with Moses. I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple going through the midst of them and so passed by. Oh, yeah. All right, so Jesus said after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, as opposed to your father, the devil, hallowed be thy name. Now in Revelation 2.17, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, we got to overcome people, that's important. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that received it, that receiveth it. So, those who make it into the kingdom are going to have a new name that only they know. Well, and the Lord, that's it, right? Let's go to Revelation 19. Verse 11, I guess. You know, we could read all, I could read whole chapters all night, but I'm trying to keep this at a reasonable length. Revelation 19, 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written, he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Maybe we're not supposed to know God's name. I wonder. Because it's hallowed. And we are sinful flesh. So. Alright, so. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Alright, let's talk about God's kingdom coming. 